The Battle of Gazala was fought during the Western Desert Campaign of the Second World War, west of the port of Tobruk in Libya, from 26 May to 21 June 1942. Axis troops of the Panzer Army Africa consisting of German and Italian units fought the British Eighth Army composed mainly of British Commonwealth, Indian and Free French troops. The Axis troops made a decoy attack in the north as the main attack moved round the southern flank of the Gazala position. Unexpected resistance at the south end of the line around the Bir Hakim box by the Free French garrison, left Panzer Army Africa with a long and vulnerable supply route around the Gazala line. Rommel retired to a defensive position backing onto Allied minefields, forming a base in the midst of the British defences. Italian engineers lifted mines from the west side of the minefields to create a supply route through to the Axis side. Operation Aberdeen, an attack by the 8th Army to finish off the Panzer Army, was poorly coordinated and defeated in detail, many British tanks were lost and the Panzer Army regained the initiative. The 8th Army withdrew from the Gazala line and the Axis troops overran Tobruk in a day. Rommel pursued the 8th Army into Egypt and forced it out of several defensive positions. The Battle of Gazala is considered the greatest victory of Rommel's career. As both sides neared exhaustion, the 8th Army checked the Axis advance at the First Battle of El Alamein. To support the Axis advance into Egypt, the planned attack on Malta was postponed. The British were able to revive Malta as a base for attacks on Axis convoys to Libya, greatly complicating Axis supply difficulties at El Alamein. Chapter 1 – Background Chapter 1 – Section 1 – Benghazi Following Operation Crusader, in late 1941, the British Eighth Army had relieved Tobruk and driven the Axis forces from Cyrenaica to El Agala. The Eighth Army advance of 800 kilometers overstretched its supply lines and in January 1942, the Allies reduced the frontline garrison for work on lines of communication and supply dumps, preparatory to another westwards advance against Tripolitania. The elimination of Force K from Malta, which ran into an Italian minefield off Tripoli in mid-December and the arrival of Fliegerkorps II in Sicily, neutralized Allied air and naval forces in Malta, allowing more Axis supplies to reach Libya. After a two-month delay, German and Italian forces in Libya began to receive supplies and reinforcements in men and tanks, which continued until the end of May, when Fliegerkorps II was transferred to the Russian front. While aware from Signal's intelligence of these reinforcements, GHQ in Cairo underestimated their significance and Axis fighting strength, having greatly exaggerated the casualties inflicted on the Axis during Operation Crusader. In an appreciation made in January 1942, Orhinlek alluded to an Axis fighting strength of 35,000 men, when the true figure was about 80,000. The 8th Army expected to be ready by February and GHQ Cairo believed that the Axis would be too weak, and disorganized to mount a counter-offensive in the meantime. On 21 January, Rommel sent out three strong armored columns to make a tactical reconnaissance. Finding only the thinnest of screens, Rommel changed his reconnaissance into an offensive, recaptured Benghazi on 28 January and Taimimi on 3 February. By 6 February, the Allies had fallen back to a line from Gazala to Bir Hakim, a few miles west of Tobruk, from which the Italo-Germans had retired seven weeks before. The Allies had 1,309 casualties from 21 January, lost 42 tanks knocked out, another 30 through damage and breakdowns and 40 field guns. Chapter 1 Section 2 – Gazala Line Between Gazala and Taimimi, just west of Tobruk, the 8th Army was able to concentrate its forces sufficiently to turn and fight. By the 4th of February, the Axis advance had been halted and the front line stabilized from Gazala on the coast 48 kilometers west of Tobruk, to an old Ottoman fortress at Bir Hakim 80 kilometers inland to the south. The Gazala line was a series of defensive boxes accommodating a brigade each, laid out across the desert behind minefields and wire watched by regular patrols between the boxes. The Free French were to the south at the Bir Hakim box, 21 kilometers south of the 150th Infantry Brigade box, 
which was 9.7 kilometers south of the 69th Infantry Brigade box. The line was not evenly manned, with a greater number of troops covering the coast road, leaving the south less protected but the line was behind deep minefields and along the line would make an attack around the southern flank harder to supply. Behind the Ghazala line were defensive boxes known as Commonwealth Keep or Hill 209 at Ras el Madawa on the main defense line of Tobruk, about 14.5 kilometers west southwest of the port. Akroma, Knightsbridge, 19 kilometers south of Akroma and El Ardem, were sighted to block tracks and junctions. A box at Rikmo was finished just before the Axis offensive but work on boxes at point 171 6.4 km southeast of Bir Hakim and Bir El Gubi did not begin until 25 May. Chapter 2 Prelude Chapter 2 Section 1 British Preparations Churchill pressed Oinlek to attack to push the Axis out of Cyrenaica and relieve the pressure on Malta, which Churchill felt was essential to the war effort. Having particular regard to Malta, the loss of which would be a disaster of the first magnitude to the British Empire and probably fatal in the long run to the defence of the Nile Delta. The Eighth Army received new equipment, including 167 American Lend-Lease M3 Grant tanks equipped with 75mm guns, and large numbers of six-pounder anti-tank guns. Rommel thought that Allied minefields ended well north of Bir Hakim and did not know of the mine marsh surrounding the box. The Eighth Army was in the process of reorganizing, changing the relationship between infantry and artillery, while the RAF commander Arthur Tedder concentrated the efforts of the Desert Air Force on supporting the troops on the ground. Army commanders lost the power to direct air operations, which was reserved for the air commanders. A new fighter-bomber concept was developed and Air Vice Marshal Arthur Conningham, commander of the DAF, moved his headquarters to the 8th Army HQ to improve communication. Axis commanders knew that the entry of the United States into the war would give the 8th Army access to an increase in materiel but sought to forestall an Allied offensive before these supplies could influence events. By late May, the 1st South African Division was on the Ghazala line nearest the coast, the 50th Infantry Division to the south and the 1st Free French Brigade furthest south at Bir Hakim. The 1st and 7th Armoured Divisions waited behind the main line as a mobile counter-attack force, the 2nd South African Division formed a garrison at Tobruk and the 5th Indian Infantry Division was held in reserve. The Allies had 110,000 men, 843 tanks and 604 aircraft. Chapter 2 Section 2 Axis Preparations The Axis retreat to El Agala after Operation Crusader reduced the supply distance from Tripoli to 740 km. The discovery of 13,000 tons of fuel at Tripoli eased the supply crisis, despite the delivery of only 51,000 tons of supplies in January. The Panzer Army had a much shorter supply line and the British were burdened by an overextended supply line. Luftlauter II in Sicily had also regained air superiority for the Axis. Rommel asked for another 8,000 lorries but this unrealistic demand was rejected and Rommel was warned that an advance would cause another supply crisis. On 29 January, the Panzer Army recaptured Benghazi and next day ammunition supply to the front line failed. By 13 February, Rommel agreed to stop at Ghazala, 1,400 kilometers from Tripoli. Until May, monthly deliveries averaged 61,000 tons, less than the smaller Axis force received from June to October 1941 but sufficient for an offensive. The 1,400 kilometers advance to Ghazala succeeded because Benghazi was open, reducing the transport distance for about 33% of the supplies of the Panzer Army to 450 kilometers. The Italians tried to restrain Rommel by advocating the capture of Malta, which would postpone another offensive in Africa until the autumn but agreed to an attack on Tobruk for late May. An advance would stop at the Egyptian frontier, another 240 km east and the Luftwaffe would redeploy for Operation Hercules. The capture of Malta would not alter the constraints of port capacity and distance, protecting convoys and a large port close to the front, would still be necessary for victory. 
air attacks directed by Kesselring against Malta greatly reduced its offensive capacity, allowing supply convoys from Italy to reach Axis forces in Africa with increased regularity. Unter Neyman Venezia, the Axis plan of attack, was for armored forces to make a flanking maneuver south of the fortified box at Bir Hakim. On the left flank, the 132nd Armored Division Ariete would neutralize the Bir Hakim box and on the right flank, the 21st Panzer Division and 15th Panzer Division would advance north behind the 8th Army defenses, to destroy the Allied armor and cut off the infantry divisions on the Gazala line. On the far right of the attack, a Kampfgruppe from the 90th Light Africa Division was to advance to El Ardem, south of Tobruk and cut the line of supply from the port to the Gazala line while holding Allied troops at Tobruk caught the rest of the Italian 20 Motorized Corps, the Italian 101st Motorized Division Triessa, would open a gap in the minefield north of the Bir Hakim box near the Sidi Mufta box, to create a supply route to the armor. Rommel anticipated that, having dealt with the Allied armor, he would capture El Ardem, Ed Duda, Sidi Rezeg and Knightsbridge. The Axis tanks would then be in a position to attack on the following day westwards against the 8th Army defensive boxes between Gazala and Arlem Hamza, meeting the eastwards attack by the Italian 10 and 21 Corps. By late May, the Axis forces comprised 90,000 men, 560 tanks and 542 aircraft. Chapter 3 – Battle Chapter 3 – Section 1 – Operation Venice at 1400 hours on the 26th of May, the Italian 10 and 21 Corps launched a frontal attack on the central Gazala positions, after a heavy artillery concentration, beginning to name in Venezia. A few elements of the Africa Corps and 20 Mobile Corps were attached to these assault groups. During the day, the bulk of the Africa Corps moved, to give the impression that this was the main Axis assault. When night fell, the armored formations turned south in a sweeping move around the southern end of the Gazala line. In the early hours of the 27th of May, Rommel led the elements of Panzerami Africa, the Deutsches Afrika Korps, Italian 20 Motorized Corps, and the German 90th Light Africa Division, in a bold flanking move around the southern end of the Allied line, using the Allied minefields to protect the Axis flank and rear. Ariete Division of 20 Motorized Corps was held up for about an hour by the 3rd Indian Motor Brigade of the 7th Armored Division, dug in about 6 kilometers, southeast of Bir Hakim at Rugbet El Atusk. The 132nd Tank Infantry Regiment of the Ariete Division sent its experienced 8 and 9 medium tank battalions forward, while the fresh X medium tank battalion was in second line. The Indian position was overrun with the loss of 23 tanks, some of which were repairable on the field, 30 men killed and 50 wounded, while the Indians lost 440 men killed and wounded and about 1,000 prisoners, including Admiral Sir Walter Cowan, and most of its equipment. The 21st Panzer Division was advancing south of the position and did not take part in the action. Further to the east, the 15th Panzer Division had engaged the 4th Armored Brigade of the 7th Armored Division, which had been ordered south to support the 3rd Indian and 7th Motorized Brigades. In a mutually costly engagement, the Germans were surprised by the range and power of the 75mm guns on the new M3 tanks. The 4th Armored Brigade then withdrew toward El Ardem and spent the night near the Bellum supply base, east of El Ardem. By late morning, the Axis armored units had advanced more than 25 miles north but by noon had been stopped by the 1st Armored Division in more mutually costly fighting. On the far right of the Axis advance, the 90th Light Africa Division engaged the 7th Motorized Brigade at Reekman and forced it to withdraw eastwards on Bir El Gubi. Resuming their advance toward El Ardem before noon, Armored cars of the 90th Light came upon the advanced HQ of 7th Armored Division near Bir Bude, dispersing it and capturing a number of officers including the commander, Frank Maservi, who pretended to be a Batman and an escaped. The inexcusable lapse in security left the division without effective command for the next two days. As planned, 90th Light Division reached the El Ardem area by mid-morning, and captured a number of supply dumps. The following day, 
The 4th Armored Brigade was sent to El Ardem and the 90th Light Division was driven back to the southwest. The tank battle continued for three days, lacking possession of Bir Hakim, Rommel drew the Africa Corps into a defensive position, using the extensive Allied mine belts to block an Allied approach from the west. The British tanks attacked several times from the north and east against accurate defensive fire. The Axis supply situation became desperate, defending the German rear, the Ariete Division repulsed attacks by the British Armoured Brigades on 29 May and during the first week of June. Chapter 3 Section 2 Bir Hakim The Bir Hakim box was defended by the 1st Free French Brigade under Marie-Pierre Koenig. On 27 May, the Italian 9 Tank Battalion of the 132nd Tank Infantry Regiment, which had not been engaged in the destruction of the 3rd Indian Brigade box and had continued to advance alone at full speed, stumbled in the French positions and launched a hasty attack, which was a costly failure against the French 75mm guns and mines. On the night of 1-2nd of June, the 90th Light and Triesa divisions were sent south to renew the attack on Bir Hakim, where the battle continued for another ten days. Our attacks repeatedly bogged down in the excellent French fortifications. During the first ten days of our attack against the French the British had remained amazingly calm. The Ariete division alone was attacked by them on the 2nd of June but it defended itself stubbornly. After a counter-attack, by the 21st Panzer Division the situation there again became quiet. Reinforced with a further Kompfgruppe, the Axis attacked Bir Hakim again on the 9th of June and overran the defences by the following day. Ritchie ordered the remaining troops to evacuate as best they could, under the cover of darkness. Under fire through the night, many of the French were able to find gaps in the line through which to withdraw. The survivors then made their way some 8 kilometers to the west, to rendezvous with transport from the 7th Motor Brigade. About 2,700 troops of the original garrison of 3,600 escaped and about 500 French troops, many of whom were wounded, were captured when the 90th Light Division occupied the position on the 11th of June. Chapter 3 Section 3 The Cauldron Early on the 29th of May, Supply vehicles supported by the Triesa and Ariete divisions, worked through the minefield north of Bir Hakim and reached the Africa Corps. On 30 May, Rommel pulled the Africa Corps back westward against the edge of the minefields, creating a defensive position. A link was formed with elements of the Italian X Corps, which were clearing two routes through the minefields from the west. In the process, the C.D. Mufta box was overrun and the 150th Infantry Brigade destroyed. In the afternoon I personally reconnoitred the possibilities for an attack on Got L.U.A. Leb and detailed units of the Africa Corps, 90th Light Division and the Italian Triesa Division for an assault on the British positions next morning. The attack was launched on the morning of 31 May. German-Italian units fought their way forward yard by yard against the toughest British resistance imaginable. Nevertheless, by the time evening came we had penetrated a substantial distance into the British positions. On the following day the defenders were to receive their quietus. After heavy Stuka attacks, the infantry again surged forward against the British field positions. Piece by piece the elaborate British defences were won until by early afternoon the whole position was ours. The last British resistance was quenched. We took in all 3,000 prisoners and destroyed or captured 101 tanks and armoured cars, as well as 124 guns of all kinds. Acting on mistaken reports about German tank losses, Orhinleck strongly urged Ritchie to counter-attack along the coast, to exploit the absence of German tanks and break through to Taimimi and then Mekili. Ritchie was more concerned by Tobruk, brought reinforcements up to the El Ardem box and created new defensive boxes opposite the gaps in the minefield. Ritchie ordered the 8th Army to counterattack against the Africa Corps on 5 June but they were met by accurate fire from tank and anti-tank guns positioned in the cauldron. In the north, 13 Corps made no progress but the attack by 7th Armoured and 5th Indian Divisions on the eastern flank of the cauldron at 2.50 initially went well. 
An important element of the plan was the destruction of the Axis anti-tank screen with an artillery bombardment, but because of an error in plotting its position, the bombardment fell too far to the east. When the 22nd Armored Brigade advanced, it was met by massed anti-tank fire and checked. The 32nd Army Tank Brigade, advancing from the north, joined the attack at dawn but also ran into massed fire, losing 50 of 70 tanks. By early afternoon on 5 June, Rommel split his forces, deciding to attack east with the Ariete and 21st Panzer Divisions while he sent elements of 15th Panzer Division northwards against the Knightsbridge box. The eastward thrust towards Bir el Hatmat dispersed the tactical HQs of the two British divisions, as well as the HQs of the 9th Indian Infantry Brigade, the 10th Indian Infantry Brigade and other smaller units, which caused command to break down. The 22nd Armoured Brigade, having lost 60 of its 156 tanks, was forced from the battlefield by more attacks from the 15th Panzer Division. Three Indian Infantry Battalions, a reconnaissance regiment and four artillery regiments of the attacking force were left behind, unsupported by armor and overrun. Rommel retained the initiative, maintaining his strength in the cauldron while the number of operational British tanks diminished. A number of probes were sent to test the various opposing strong points and from 6 to 8 June, further attacks were launched on Bir Hakim and repulsed by the French garrison. The 7th Motor Brigade and 29th Indian Infantry Brigade continued to harass the Axis lines of communications. Chapter 3 Section 4, Black Saturday 13 June On the 11th of June, Rommel pushed the 15th Panzer Division and 90th Light Africa Division toward El Ardem and by 12 June had begun forcing the 201st Guards Brigade out of the Knightsbridge box to Tobruk. The 29th Indian Infantry Brigade repulsed an attack on the El Ardem box on 12 June but the 2nd and 4th Armoured Brigades on their left were pushed back 6 kilometers by the 15th Panzer Division and had to leave their damaged tanks on the battlefield. On 13 June, the 21st Panzer Division advanced from the west and engaged the 22nd Armoured Brigade. The Africa Corps demonstrated a superiority in tactics, combining tanks with anti-tank guns in the attack, Rommel acted rapidly on intelligence obtained from Allied radio traffic intercepts. By the end of the day, the British tank strength had been reduced from 300 tanks to about 70 and the Africa Corps had established armor superiority and a dominating line of positions, making 13 Corps on the Ghazala line vulnerable to being cut off. By the end of the 13th of June, the Knightsbridge box was virtually surrounded and it was abandoned by the Guards Brigade later that night, with their commanding officer Thomas Bevan having been killed the previous day. Due to these defeats, the 13th of June became known as Black Saturday to the 8th Army. Chapter 3 Section 4 Subsection 2 Rigel Ridge On the 13th of June, the 21st Panzer Division attacked Rigel Ridge in the middle of a sandstorm. The Germans overran part of the 2nd Scots Guards at the Knightsbridge box at the west end of Rigel Ridge, overlooked by the 6th South African Anti-Tank Battery of the 2nd Field Regiment, Natal Field Artillery and a battery of the 11th Regiment RHA nearby. The South African gunners kept firing until their guns were destroyed, allowing the withdrawal of other Allied formations. The South African battery commander had decided to stay and maintain fire against the German tanks, to delay the Germans for as long as possible. The remaining guns were commanded individually, and fired at the panzers over open sights. The German tanks took up positions behind the ridge, with anti-tank guns placed between them. A column of panzers attacked from the rear, surrounding them and cutting off all escape and the gunners kept firing until the eight guns had been destroyed. About half the gun detachments were killed and wounded, including the battery commander and many officers. The last gun in action was manned by Lieutenant Ashley and a signaller, when the battery had been silenced, the Axis tanks approached cautiously, and the South African gunners were taken prisoner. The Germans captured over 3,000 Allied prisoners. Chapter 3 Section 5, 8th Army Retreat On the 14th of June, Oinlek authorized Ritchie to withdraw from the Ghazala line. 
The defenders in the El Ardem and two neighboring boxes held on and the 1st South African Division was able to withdraw along the coast road, practically intact. The road could not accommodate two divisions and the remaining two brigades of the 50th Division could not retreat eastwards, because of the Axis tanks and attacked southwest, breaking through the lines of the 27th Infantry Division Brescia and 17th Infantry Division Paviovex Corps, then headed south into the desert, before turning east. London would not contemplate a withdrawal to the better defensive positions on the Egypt-Libya frontier and on the 14th of June, Orhinlek ordered Tarichi to hold a line running southeast from Akroma through El Ardem to Bir El Gubi. By the evening of the 15th of June, the point 650 box had been overrun and on the 16th of June, the defenders at point 187 had been forced by lack of supplies to evacuate. The defensive boxes at El Ardem and Sidi Rizeg were also attacked by the Africa Corps. On the 17th of June, both boxes were evacuated ending any chance of preventing the encirclement of Tobruk. Ritchie ordered the 8th Army to withdraw to Mursa Matru, about 100 miles east of the frontier, leaving Tobruk to threaten the Axis lines of communication as in 1941. The retreat became known to some as the Ghazala Gallop. Chapter 3 Section 6, Fall of Tobruk In February 1942, the Army, Navy and Air Force Commanders-in-Chief in Cairo had agreed that Tobruk should not stand another siege. The defences at Tobruk had not been maintained and it was garrisoned by inexperienced troops. Orhinlek viewed the defence of Tobruk as a lesser matter and told Ritchie that he did not intend to hold it at all costs. An immense store of supplies of every description had been accumulated around the port for an allied offensive and Orinlek expected it to be able to hold out for two months with the supplies in the fortress. The British Prime Minister Winston Churchill had placed great store on the symbolic value of Tobruk and there was an exchange of ambiguous signals, leading to the port becoming surrounded and besieged, rather than evacuated as originally planned. Operation Venice began on 26 May 1942 and drove the 8th Army east of Tobruk, leaving it vulnerable to attack from the east. Got garrisoned Tobruk with the two brigades of 2nd South African Division along with the 201st Guards Brigade, 11th Indian Infantry Brigade, 32nd Army Tank Brigade and the 4th Anti-Aircraft Brigade. Panzer Army Africa penetrated a weak spot on the eastern defensive perimeter and took the port within 24 hours. The garrison of 33,000 men was captured, many of those on the western perimeter not having been engaged. Over 1,000 vehicles in working order, 5,000 long tons of food and 1,400 long tons of petrol were captured. The surrender was the largest capitulation of British Empire forces in the war after the Battle of Singapore in February 1942. Later in the year, a court of inquiry found Klopper to be largely blameless for the surrender and ascribed the defeat to failures among the British High Command. The findings were kept secret until after the war, doing little to restore the reputation of Klopper and his troops. Chapter 4, Aftermath Chapter 4 Section 1, Analysis With the capture of Tobruk, the Axis gained a port nearer the Aegean Crete route and a large amount of Allied supplies. If the Allies could not stop the Germans in Egypt, they would take the Suez Canal and potentially drive for the oil fields in the Middle East. Hitler rewarded Rommel with a promotion to the rank of Field Marshal, the youngest German officer ever to achieve this rank. Rommel remarked he would have preferred another Panzer Division. Churchill wrote. This was one of the heaviest blows I can recall during the war. Not only were its military effects grievous, but it had affected the reputation of the British armies. Orhinlek dismissed Ritchie on 25 June and assumed command of the 8th Army for the First Battle of El Alamein, where he stopped Rommel's advance. In August, Orhinlek was replaced as 8th Army commander by the 13th Corps commander, Lieutenant General William Gott, and as C&C Middle East command by General Sir Harold Alexander. Gott was killed when his aircraft was shot down and Lieutenant General Bernard Montgomery was appointed as his replacement. In 2017, James Holland wrote. As Rommel said to a captured British officer, 
what difference does it make if you have two tanks to my one, when you spread them out and let me smash them in detail? That one sentence really did encapsulate the nub of the matter and the failure of the orc's approach. Frankly, he and his senior commanders should have known better by now. Chapter 4 Section 2 Casualties The 8th Army lost 50,000 men killed, wounded or captured, including circa 35,000 prisoners taken at Tobruk. The Germans suffered 3,360 casualties, about 15% of their force. Italian casualties were 3,000 men, 125 tanks, 44 armored cars, 450 motor vehicles, 39 guns and 74 47mm anti-tank guns. On 30 June, the Africa Corps reported that Axis tank losses were circa 400 and that only 44 to 55 German tanks were operational, the Italian 20 Corps was down to 15 tanks and the 90th Light Africa Division had only 1,679 men left. The 8th Army lost thousands of tons of supplies, nearly 800,000 rounds of artillery ammunition, nearly 13 million rounds of small arms ammunition and a huge number of tanks. Hundreds of damaged tanks had been left behind when armored regiments retreated and it was estimated that there were 1,188 tank casualties in 17 days. On the 22nd of June, the Desert Air Force had 463 operational aircraft, 420 of them in the Middle East, the Germans 183 and the Italians 238, with another 174 in reserve and 500 in the Mediterranean excluding Italy. The Royal Army Ordnance Corps recovered 581 tanks up to 19 June, repaired 278 and sent 222 back to Egypt. The 8th Army was reduced to about 185 operational tanks by the end of the battle and shuffling operational tanks and crews between units disrupted unit organization. Seven field artillery regiments, 6,000 lorries and two tank repair workshops were lost. By the 1st of July, the 8th Army was back at El Alamein, with 137 serviceable tanks, 42 en route from workshops and 902 tanks waiting to be repaired. Chapter 4 Section 3 Subsequent Operations Panzer Army Africa began Unternehmen an Aida an advance upon Egypt, while the 8th Army fell back to El Alamein. Ohinlek decided not to hold Mursa Matru, choosing to fight a delaying action with 10 and 13 corps. The Africa Corps was delayed at the Battle of Mursa Matru but signal failures led to disorganization and the ex-Corps line of retreat along the coast road being cut off. The Corps broke out at night to the south and worked its way around the German positions, collided with Axis forces several times and lost more than 6,000 prisoners, 40 tanks and a large quantity of supplies. Orhinlek had ordered the bulk of the 8th Army to retire another 160 kilometers to El Alamein, 100 kilometers from Alexandria. The retirements brought the 8th Army closer to its base and the Katara depression to the south of El Alamein closed the southern flank. The Allied and Axis forces fought the First Battle of El Alamein, the Battle of Alam El Halfa, and the Second Battle of El Alamein. Operation Agreement, a British landing at Tobruk during the night of 13-14 September, to rescue Allied prisoners, was a failure. Chapter 5, Orders of Battle Allied and Axis Forces, Ghazala, 26 May, 21 June 1942 Chapter 5 Section 1, Allies Middle East Command 8th Army 13 Corps 1st South African Division South African 1st Infantry Brigade Group South African 2nd Infantry Brigade Group South African 3rd Infantry Brigade Group 2nd South African Division South African 4th Infantry Brigade Group South African 6th Infantry Brigade Group 9th Indian Infantry Brigade Group 11th Indian Infantry Brigade 50th Infantry Division 150th Infantry Brigade Group 151st Infantry Brigade Group 
69th Infantry Brigade Group. 1st Army Tank Brigade. 32nd Army Tank Brigade 30 Corps 1st Armored Division. 2nd Armored Brigade Group. 22nd Armored Brigade Group. 201st Guards Motor Brigade. 7th Armored Division. 4th Armored Brigade Group. 7th Motor Brigade Group. 3rd Indian Motor Brigade Group. 29th Indian Infantry Brigade Group from 5th Indian Infantry Division. 1st Free French Brigade Group Army Reserve. 5th Indian Infantry Division. 10th Indian Infantry Brigade. 2nd Free French Brigade Group. 10th Indian Infantry Division. 20th Indian Infantry Brigade. 21st Indian Infantry Brigade. 25th Indian Infantry Brigade. 11th Indian Infantry Brigade. 1st Armored Brigade. 5th Indian Infantry Brigade from mid-June. Chapter 5 Section 2 Axis Details from Pit 2001 unless indicated. Comandante Superiore, General d'Armata Ettore Bastico Panzer Arme Africa. Deutsches Afrika Corps. 15th Panzer Division 21st Panzer Division. 90th Light Division. Corpo d'Armata di Manovera 20. 132nd Armored Division Ariete. 101st Motorized Division Triesa Infanterie Grupp Cruel. Corpo d'Armata X. 27th Infantry Division Brescia. 17th Infantry Division Pavia. Corpo d'Armata 21. 102nd Motorized Division Trento. 60th Infantry Division Sabrata. Light Infantry Regiment 155. 